the next analysis we want to do on a regression model is residual analysis. So the question can arise, how can I be sure the relationship between my two variables is linear? And the answer is, it's complicated. <laughs> there is no one test to be 100% sure that a linear relationship exists, even if you think you see one visually. Um, but there are a lot of things you do to check for a linear relation. So one of the first things you do from section 4.1 is that we look at a scatter plot. You kind of look at it visually. Does it look linear on that scatter plot, on that scatter diagram? Does it look linear or not? Um, in 4.1 and 4.3, we consider the strength from 4.1 of R and from 4.3 R squared, either one or both, right? So you'll consider the strength of, that of those values, right? Your correlation coefficient or your coefficient of determination. And in this section, we're going to look at a residual plot. Now remember, we've seen residuals. Residuals are the errors of each point away from the line, right? How far vertically these points are from that line. Um, and then we're going to make a plot of them. Now if you kept going, in Chapter 14 there are more rigorous tests, but we're not going to cover them in, the, in this class. They're hypothesis tests on a regression line, if you're interested. You can read about them, but I would recommend after you've done Chapter 10 and maybe 11 so you know what you're doing. <laughs> All right, now a residual plot is a graph that shows the residuals on the y-axis and the explanatory variable on the x-axis. We are not going to draw these by hand. It's just a um, convenient way for us to look at them. So we'll have computers draw them for us. Okay, so if you look here, right, you have your points. They all have a vertical distance away from that line. Right? That distance right there is the residual. And it's true for all of these points. Like every single one of these points has a little bit away from that line. So for example, this one looks about, I don't know, there's the line. It looks like it's four away or so from that line. And sure enough, that's where this point is. See, it's about four and some change away from the line. The line is right here at zero. So if I bring it in. Oh, there's a formatting mistake in this graph, so pay no attention to this extra horizontal line. Pay attention to the zero line. I'll fix that for future semesters. It, it didn't like it when I copied and pasted it from a program. All right, so it's right there. And again, pretend this other little line isn't here, because I'll make it disappear for later semesters. There, I kind of whited it out a little bit. The important part is this horizontal line at zero, because that's standing in for that trend line. And then you're looking at the y value differences. So this particular one right here is about four up, right? This little guy right here is that point right there. He's a little bit below. That dot right there is that dot right there. So if I use different colors, for example, if this one's blue, that's that one. So it's a graph of those residuals. It's a graph of those differences. And it's it's like it takes the line and tilts it horizontal and puts it at zero. And then you compare where those distances are to that line. That's a residual plot. So it's a graph of the distances, the vertical distances from the dots to the line. Now, that said, what are you looking for when you're looking at this graph? Well, you're looking for something you're not really expecting. You want the points to look randomly dispersed. That's what you want. So you want it to look like somebody just th threw the points up there, tossed them up, right? You, what you do not want is a random, a non-random pattern or a horn or cone shape. Um, th those are the bad things. So you want a random pattern. A random pattern is called constant error variance. It means that all the points are um, have the same amount of error because residual is just error. Right? That's all residuals are. So right, it's a fancy word for error. So you want that error to be constant. Right? You want the variability of the error, right? the variance of the error, to be constant. So you want it to be randomly dispersed, like somebody just tossed the points around. You don't want a non-random pattern, I can say it again, <laughs> and you do not want a horn shape. Now, if you find that 
the linear model was inappropriate. If you find that your residual plot has a pattern to it, for example, this one, it has a pattern. That means that everything that you built, the slope, the y-intercept, the correlation coefficient, all of it, is all worthless. All of it. It means nothing. If there was a, if it was not appropriate to use a linear model, if the residual plot shows you you should not use a linear model, then all those other calculations are meaningless. They're worthless. Hmm. All right, so let's look at these four examples. Um, I already mentioned the first one. You can see it has a non-random pattern. So it's asking us, was um, regression models were found for these data sets and the respective residual plots are drawn below. For which data sets were linear models appropriate and not appropriate? So this is linear model not appropriate. It very obviously has a quadratic pattern. There's a non-random pattern. I will tell you that residual plots tend to work better when there's a lot of data. Um, that's not particularly the case in these examples, but it, it does. It is true in general. So think about it. You went to all the trouble to find a slope and an intercept and all of that stuff. All of it's worthless. You should toss it out. The linear model was not appropriate for this data set. All right, what about this particular one? Well, this has the problem of having, um, it does not have constant error variance it's getting worse and worse. So you're starting off close and you're getting farther and farther and farther away. That's a cone shape or a horn shape. So this is not linear model, not appropriate also. And so your slope and your intercept and all of that good stuff should be tossed out. And you can get cone shapes both directions, by the way. This one's opening up to the right. You can also have cone shapes um, to the left like that or to the right. right. These are cone shapes. So if you have dots kind of growing or shrinking, right, either one, it makes it inappropriate because your horizontal line is coming right down the middle, right? And that's not good. All right, so this one is a cone shape. This one actually is okay. It looks like somebody just kind of through the points up there. So this is a linear model appropriate. So you would not throw out your slope and your intercept and all of that good stuff. Right? It has a non-random, or excuse me, um, because it has a random pattern. You want a random pattern. I know it seems crazy, but basically you want your um, diagonal line for your linear regression model to um, have random points dispersed around it. You don't want it to be all on one side or all on the other. You want the points to kind of all be evenly distributed around that line. And then this one is actually a different kind of problem. This is actually a real data set. This is um, airline sales, um, number of passengers on airlines for different years, as a matter of fact. Um, so linear model is not appropriate. It has a kind of an S-shaped curve. It has a non-random pattern. It has a curve, right? Curves are never a good sign. Again, you want it to be that the points look like they were tossed up there on the page, randomly scattered. That's what you want. It's just, I guess I'll just put that up here. You want, um, well, I mentioned it, random disbursement, random scatter. You want a random pattern. I know it seems crazy, but that's what you want. Not for a scatter plot. Scatter plot's a different thing, but for a residual plot, you want it to be randomly dispersed, like it is on that one right there. So this one makes us happy.